So when you decided that you were ready to, to speak out about what happened to you, uh, you, you joined Speaker Slam, which is this amazing platform for, for speakers, platform. for sharing stories. And your, your story, your talk went viral. It was viewed, you know, 1.7 million times or more at this point. And you were, you, you forgave the men who assaulted you, which is a hard thing to do. And I'm sure most people don't get to that point. What was your experience like on speaker slam and, and how much, how much courage did it take to open up and be vulnerable and share that with, you know, millions of people now at this point? Put it this way. I love food, love, love food. I eat well, but I love food. I did not eat that day. Like could not eat. I could, I love chocolate. You can even have fed me chocolate. I was like, um, it was terrifying. It was terrifying. I was excited, but it was like, I'm not talking about how to grow your business and like how to just excel in your relationships. I'm talking about myself, not you. And I'm talking about something that is very shameful and very triggering. So in my brain, I'm like, okay, I feel okay to publicly speak about this, but how are people going to receive me? Are they going to be angry? Because the thing is, is what I spoke about is, is forgiving someone that how are you with words on your podcast? You mean like vulgarity? Well, like the, the say, R word. You can say whatever you want. Because <laughs> sometimes people get like a trigger warning. I'm going to say the word rape. When like that I thought you were going to say retarded, which you're not allowed to say. So yeah, rape. Yeah, Go that's ahead. not a word. But rape is a very triggering word for people. And, and with good reason. But when you talk about going through rape, as your first sexual experience and then having love and forgiveness for the man that did it and the man that assaulted me 10 years after that, people are angry to hear that I've gone through that. And then it makes them think of the women in their own lives. And then it triggers the women or the men, because this is not just a, a female thing, but they, if it's happened to them, then they just simply look at the other person as the abuser. And, and I get that completely. And I did for a very long time. Like you just, it's easy to go and look at the people that do the bad things and label them bad people. And when you try to shed light on behavior is bad, not necessarily people and that hurt people hurt people and that continuously shaming, belittling, tearing down, stifling, throwing someone in a cell. Like as soon as I started studying psychology and understanding healing more, it was like, that will not actually make this person any better, which also means it's going to send them in a direction that they could do it again, worse, right? So for me, I would be lying if I didn't tell you that the main reason was to set myself free. I didn't forgive him for him initially or them for them. I forgave them for me because I decided they would no longer haunt me, right? Like an experience that lasted four hours essentially lasted 14 years because I allowed them to stay within my body and control my everyday life my the way I connect with other people the way I allow people to love me the way I trust people or don't right and at that point I said enough is enough this is an experience the experience is now over and I'm taking my life back and I knew that I needed to forgive so that I can actually take the claws that have been latched to my heart for so long out of my body and they can be set free. And in that process, was I allowed to see the person as a human, a very injured, traumatized human that had very bad behavior and actions. I am not condoning sexual trauma in any way. Sexual trauma is horrific and kills people right? Like it's not okay. And 
we can't necessarily control all of the things that happen to us, but we can control what we do after. And that's where the route that I chose to take. And I completely understand that some people don't. And I understand that sometimes it takes people decades to make the choice. It took me 14 years. But I believe that we have life to live. And it deserves to be lived, right? Whatever it takes to get to that space to live a life alive. I didn't want to simply survive. I wanted to thrive. And that was a choice. And it was an uncomfortable choice. And it was scary. And it was not linear, right? It was up, down, all around. But getting on stage talking about those things brought up all of that emotion is I knew there was going to be people that hated what I said. I knew that there was going to be people that judged it. I knew that it was people going to be triggered by it. I knew there was going to be people possibly inspired by it. I had my family there. That was terrifying because as much as my family knew what I had gone through, they did not hear it in the way that it was shared. Um, For people that don't know, you're not sharing about an experience. You're sharing from the experience on speaker slam. So when you hear me, you're hearing me from the intensity of being in it. And that's painful and very activating. So watching my dad and my younger brother be in an experience hearing what's happened to their daughter. And remember my dad is a big tough man that he still wishes I told him when it happened for every reason why every father would, right? Um, so it was, it was all of that. And then getting on the stage and finally sharing the words, it was like, it was a surreal experience because you could hear a pin drop. Like I remember in the middle of it, as I'm speaking, I could, I could literally like people's eye, like, I don't think people were breathing or blinking or anything. They were just staring at me. And then I was like, okay. And then when it ended, people just like erupted in everything, whether it was cheering or crying or all of the things which was great. And my nervous system felt lovely. Um, Was it a cathartic experience? Like a weight had been lifted? Like it, you've been holding on to it for so long that after 14 years, you were able to release that? Yeah. I think there's something to be said about doing the work and doing it individually um, and then being seen in it. Right. It's like, not only was I able to share something that if with hopes has an impact for you, but I just got seen by literally millions of people in one of the most traumatic, hard experiences of my life. And were there people that made some stupid comments online? Like when, and that's the reality is when you go viral. That's what people do online. The keyboard warriors, yeah. Never have I had a single person to my face do anything awful. But the thing is, is like 99.9% of people were, I had people all over the globe, people that didn't speak English that were writing me in a completely different language that I then had to switch to English to find out what they're saying. And in the message, they're like, I'm hoping that you're transcribing, translating, translating this because I don't know how to do this in English but I just want to share this. And so it's funny because they're even calling it out. Like they're like, please do this. Um, where, where could our listeners see this video on your website? Right. So it is on my website now. Yeah. Because interestingly enough is when you have the word rape in something like this, it gets pulled down all the time. So it's up, down, up, down. So right now it is currently on my website. Um, it got picked up by inner light media. So sometimes you can also find it on their site, but it keeps getting pulled because you're not allowed to say the word, which is why I asked you if you're allowed to. Hmm. Because they say that you're not allowed to gain attention around sexual trauma. And it's like, well, that's how you heal sexual trauma is actually having conversation about it. Hmm. So so the website is just your name.com, right? JessicaMoreforth.com. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So people can go and hopefully the video is still up there. It's up and down, but uh, 
you know, they should definitely it's go check on my website because I was able to download it and like embed it. I just find that when you go search, search it through like Google and stuff is that's where it's like on and off, on and off. Mm. It's just, it's really interesting. Like I've even had networks reach out to me and they're like, Hey, you've got this word here. Therefore, and I'm like, have you seen what's online right now going around the world? And this you, is you can part. watch videos of like people getting murdered. It's insane yeah. that you can't have yeah. that word, especially in the context in which you're using it, which is right. to help people. But uh, sure. speaking of words, I have some kind words that are sent in here from the co-founder of Speaker Slam. This is Rena Rovanelli. So she has to say, wow. Jessica is a special person. She was willing to be extremely vulnerable and uncomfortable so that her truth and her message could be shared and received by those who needed it the most. That bravery resulted in over a million people hearing her story and benefiting from the profound wisdom of the power of forgiveness. It was a unique story and it deserved to be heard. I'm so proud of her. Rena Rovanelli, co-founder of Speaker Slam. So oh what, do, gosh, what, what do those words mean to you from someone that's done so much good in her life? I don't even know if I can put it into words of what that means. Like my whole body has goosebumps and like, I just feel like my heart is just like, ugh. Rena is an incredibly powerful speaker. She is a profound human being and like such a loving woman. She supported me from day one. Um, it was somebody else that kind of submitted me into speaking and forced me, like literally I showed up to hear someone else speak and someone else brought me to Rena and was like, you need to meet Rena because you need to speak. And then Rena and I spoke and Rena was like, heck yeah. And then she really, really helped me in articulating the words in a way that cut out the fluff. Because I think that we have been very programmed to believe that like, even I asked you, like, am I even allowed to say this word? You know what I mean? Like we're programmed to make it cushiony. So it doesn't offend people. And Rena was like, no, like this is this, the truth needs to be shared. And she was such an incredible support system and, and guide in being able to do that. And she was like one of my number one cheerleaders there. And she I think that is another thing is as I was walking off that stage, she was standing right there and I just remember hugging her and just feeling like we had one, not just me. And she, she's a, she's a powerful woman. And if people get the opportunity to speak with her and be with her, I highly recommend it because she, she's a good one. She's a keeper. So the, thank you Rena, for that. The, the pandemic has been tough for those that do a lot of live events like her and I, um, you know, I watch her updates on social media and it's, you know, she, she full-time does speaker slam in these events and then boom, no events for two years. And I, I see the struggle for her where, you know, now the, the lockdowns are over. So she, she starts building the next big event, has a theater where she has put all this money down, sells all these tickets and out of nowhere, the night Uh, before new lockdown commences tomorrow morning and it's shut. Like you can't get the money back. The tickets are sold. The perform people have flown in. So it's, it's, it's been, you know, a lot of industries have been hit hard with the pandemic, Uh But the live event industry, and I know firsthand, I haven't done a single event in two years. Um, But just speaking about her, it it like breaks my heart to see specifically her passion, her gift, all the things that she she does, having to take a backseat for who knows how long. And it looks like now maybe things are opening up and you can start up again. But this is what it looked like all the other times that it locked down again. So so the crazy thing is is the character of who she is will start back up like it never stopped yep right like of course she's hurting right now as all of you are in that in that industry but once she starts like her heart can't not be lit in that environment and i cannot wait for everybody in that industry to be able to spread their wings and soar. And, and I know that all of you, all of you very much will, because that's your fuel. And I think that the, the events will be that much more profound because 
there will be nothing but gratitude. And, and I think that you now know what it's like to not have that. So when you have it, it's like, it's going to be potent. And I'm excited for that for all of you.